Last year, I was trying to sell my 2007 Mercury Mariner. It was in pretty good shape, but had a lot of miles, and it's kind of old. But overall, it ran very good and is a good car. I decided to list it on Craigslist because I've had experience buying cars on there before. When I had used Craigslist in the past, it had gone pretty well. So I took several pictures of the car and then listed it. The next day, I didn't get any interest at all. But on the second day, I got a response to the ad. The text message came from a man saying that his name was Al and that he wanted to buy the car. He seemed pretty confident about it right away. I was asking a pretty reasonable price, so I gave him my address to come and look at it. Now I lived in an apartment building. I didn't think it was a big deal to give out the address because there were several buildings in the complex. My car was already parked out in the parking lot and the guy would have no way of knowing which apartment was mine. So I asked Al when he was free and he said he could come by the next day after work at 9 p.m. I said okay and then I cleaned out the car and got it ready for selling. The following night, I left my apartment building and went to my car in the parking lot. Al showed up shortly after and parked nearby. He got out and I met him by my mariner. Al was a big guy, had lots of tattoos, was probably about 250 pounds and 6 feet tall. After meeting, I showed Al the car and he looked around at it. After several minutes, he asked to take it for a test drive. I went with him and Al drove the car around the block and down some nearby streets. I remember that he said he liked it and it seemed fine. At that point, I was really thinking that I was going to sell the car that night. After the test drive, we returned to my apartment complex and he parked the car in the space that it had been before. But then, after we got out of the car, Al just said that he would think about it. I was disappointed because it seemed like he was going to buy it before. But I just said okay and then said bye to him. But that's when Al asked me if he could use my bathroom quick. This seemed sketchy. Why did he think it would be okay with me for him to use my bathroom? I said no thanks and started walking away. To me, I was afraid that it might be some sort of a setup. I didn't want this guy coming into my apartment. He was still kind of standing around by my car though. My apartment building had a side door and a front door. The side door was not very far away so I decided to walk to the front. I left Al standing there and headed inside. I was kind of afraid that he was going to follow me, but when I left and got to the front doors, I looked back and didn't see him at all. This made me feel better and I entered the building. When I got inside, I turned to the right and then entered the elevator. I took it up to the third floor, which is the level that my apartment was on. When I arrived, I stepped off and started walking to the left, but when I did, I saw the door at the end of the hallway open that led to a stairwell. I saw Al entering the hallway. What was he doing here? At first, I started going towards my door, but then saw Al going towards me. I quickly stopped and then turned and started walking in the opposite direction. At that point, I started to hear Al begin to run in my direction, so I started sprinting to the end of the hallway. When I made it there, I went into the stairs on the other side and ran down. As I was going down the stairs, I heard Al enter the stairwell and continue to chase me. Then I went into the underground parking garage beneath the building. When I got down there, I ran across it to the other end of the building. I had extended my lead on Al a little bit. I heard him get to the parking garage and keep chasing me though. Then I got to the stairs on the other side and ran up them to the ground level, then left through the side door. After I was out of the building, I ran to my car and got inside. Then I just left and drove away. I called the police while driving off and told them about the man. I drove around the streets nearby for a few minutes and then returned. When I did, Al's car was still there and he was not inside of it. The police got there just a couple of minutes later. I didn't go back inside the building until they did. And when they did, they actually found Al attempting to break into another apartment. So it turns out he was never interested in buying my car. I guess he was just going to try to rob me or something. One time, I was going to buy a TV on Craigslist. This was years ago, but I would browse Craigslist at work all the time back then. 
Several times, I got really good deals or things for free. You never really knew what you would find there. But you also had to be very careful. So I found this really good deal on a nice TV. I was in the market for one, and the ad looked legit. The price was cheap, but not so cheap that it would make me wonder if it was too good to be true. The pictures of the TV appeared to be in somebody's home. I responded to the advertisement and said that I would like to buy the TV if it was still available. Within an hour, I got a text back from the seller saying that it was available. It was a woman who said her name was Joy. She gave me an address and told me to come over the following night to buy the TV. I looked up the address and it appeared to be a house in a neighborhood that was maybe 10 minutes away. So the next day, I got the cash and drove to the address. I parked on the side of the street in front of the house in what appeared to be an average neighborhood. I think it was about 7 p.m. When I knocked on the door, it was quickly answered by a woman. She looked to be in her 30s and was about average height with dark hair. She said hi and invited me inside. I stepped into what looked to be the living room of the house. There were boxes around and stuff, as if maybe they were moving. There really wasn't that much furniture, and Joy said sorry that it was a mess, and I said it was fine. She then told me that the TV was in her bedroom. She then led me to the hallway and stopped and opened the door to the bedroom. She said the TV was in there, and I stepped inside. When I did, I noticed that the room appeared to be completely empty, though. And right after I got inside, the door slammed shut behind me. It all happened so fast. I looked around, and there was no TV in there. I turned back and saw that Joy had closed the door on me. She hadn't even entered the room. I walked over and tried opening the door, but it was locked from the outside. It was so weird. I knocked on the door and asked Joy what was going on, but she did not answer me. I kept trying the door for a minute or two, and it just wouldn't open. Then I was yelling for somebody to open the door, but was getting no response. After realizing that wasn't working, I looked around the room. It was a small bedroom and was completely empty. There was literally no furniture at all. I got out my phone and tried calling my friend, but I was getting no signal in there. I thought that was weird. I tried opening the door and calling for help again, but it was apparent that nobody was going to respond to me. I looked around the room, wondering what on earth was going on. Several minutes into this, and I started to hear noises coming from outside the room. It seemed like they were coming from the living room area. It was joy and the sound of a man's voice. I couldn't tell what they were saying, but I could just hear that they were talking to each other. I yelled again, but got no response. After that, I went over to the window and tried to open it, but for some reason, it wouldn't budge. This angered me, and I went back over to the door and started banging on it as hard as I could. I wanted to break the door down. Then I heard a man's voice yelling at me to stop from down the hallway. I didn't know what these people were capable of. I did stop, but just for a moment. Then I took out my phone and found my alarms. I turned my volume all the way up and started playing the most annoying alarm noise. Then I put my phone at the far side of the room. I then walked over and stood just behind the door on the other side of that. Within probably 30 seconds, I heard somebody walking towards the room. Then they got right outside the door. The door then opened and a man walked in. He turned and first started going towards my phone making all the noise. I came out from around the corner and ran past him leaving the room. He tried grabbing me at the last second, but I just barely slipped by him. When I ran out of the room, I went down the hallway. Then when I got to the living room, I saw Joy standing there. She sort of tried to stop me, but I was going too fast and got around her as well. By now, the man had started to run after me. I opened up the door, and when I was doing so, Joy grabbed at my arm. I just got out the door, though. They were both running towards me, and I sprinted for my car, and luckily still had my keys on me. I unlocked my car, got inside, and sped away from there. Now, sadly, I left my phone, so I couldn't immediately call the police. I stopped at the first gas station that I saw, went inside, and asked their employee to call the police. They got to the gas station, and after talking with police, we went back to the house. They recovered my phone on the side of the street a block up. When they went to the house, nobody was there. I found out that those people did not actually live in the home, and somebody else had been renting it. 
so I don't know if those two were ever caught. When I looked, the Craigslist post was gone. I just know that I'm never using Craigslist again after that. I'm a male, and this happened roughly two years ago. I was selling my old phone on Craigslist after getting a new one. There was nothing wrong with the old phone, and it was only two years old. I figured there would be a good market for it, so I listed it on Craigslist. Now I was debating between eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or Craigslist. Obviously, I ended up choosing Craigslist. The price I was asking was pretty good. I didn't care about making a bunch of money off it. I really just wanted to sell the phone fast. And after posting it, I think within a few hours, I got a text message regarding the phone. Somebody told me that they were interested in buying it. I responded to them and said that it was available and they could buy it as soon as they wanted. After texting back and forth a bit longer, I gathered that it was a woman whose name was Molly. We arranged to meet up the following day outside of a local strip mall. It was I think located roughly halfway for us both, so it was a good meeting point. The next day, I took my phone and drove to the location to sell it. When I got there, everything went as planned. Molly showed up and bought the phone from me. Then we both went our separate ways. In the encounter, everything seemed normal. We didn't talk a whole lot, but I didn't notice anything strange about Molly at all. Over the next few days, things were fine. But then Molly began to text me. She was texting me, telling me to come over, and then asking if she could come to my place. This came relatively out of nowhere. In fact, at first I thought she must have the wrong number. That is, until I saw her mention my name. I mean, we were not hanging out. I was just selling her my iPhone. That was the only time I saw her. And I also did not happen to be interested in her. But even if I was, this was not the way to go about it. She sent about four or five texts within an hour of each other late one night. I thought maybe she was drunk and that explained the behavior. But she then texted me the next morning as well, once again saying that she wanted to come over. I told her that I had a girlfriend. I didn't, but I just wanted her to leave me alone. She said that didn't matter. Then she continued to text me as if we were best friends or something, saying what's up and asking what I was doing. I was still very confused by all of this. When it continued for another day, I asked her to stop, but she did not. She became angry and started cursing me out and stuff. At that point, I blocked her. I thought that was it, and even that was a pretty crazy story. I mean, I guess you never know what could happen when you use Craigslist. But that very same night, Molly actually showed up at my house. I remember hearing a knock at my front door. During this time, I lived alone in a small house that I rented. When I looked out of the front window, I saw her standing there, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, how did she know where I lived? Had she followed me home? I answered the door, just to tell her to leave me alone. When I opened up though, she instantly started cursing me out. I told her to leave, and she wouldn't. She started to advance forward, as if to enter my house. At that point, I slammed the door shut on her and locked it. She tried opening it, and then seemingly ran away. I just know that I saw her running away off the front step. I assumed that she was going, but I was wrong. Probably 30 seconds to a minute later, I heard a noise at one of the back windows. It was like a banging noise. I knew that it was her, and I instantly called the police. Then I sat inside and waited. She was pounding on the window, and then she went over and tried opening up the back door to the house. At one point, I opened up a window a distance away and warned her that I had called the police, but she didn't seem to care. She stayed there, moving from windows to doors and banging on them the entire time until the police showed up. They were finally able to stop her. I ended up having to get a restraining order against Molly. I honestly have no idea why she wouldn't leave me alone. I suspect drug use, but who knows? This has taught me to be more careful when using things like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. For a little bit of background to this story, I live in a quiet neighborhood. It's not in the middle of nowhere, and we have neighbors, but everyone has a little bit more land. 
I would say most properties are about two or three acres large. I live with my wife, but when this took place, she was out of town with her best friend. So I had just finished mowing the lawn, and I saw that I got a text message from a new number on my phone. I had no idea as to who it was. The text said the person was from Craigslist, and they wanted to know if they could come over. Now, I have never used Craigslist before in my life, and I was pretty sure my wife hadn't either. I texted back saying that it was the wrong number, and I didn't use Craigslist. Within a short time, I got a response, which was my exact address. Then they said, this is your address, right? I was really creeped out when I read it, and I didn't know how to respond. I called my wife and asked her if she had any idea what this could be, but she didn't know. So I just didn't respond to the number, hoping that it was maybe a joke or something. Several hours went by, and then I received another text from this number. This time, the text said, so can I come over or what? I responded saying, no, don't come over. I have nothing for sale. I did not get a response for a while, not until about 10 o'clock that night. There was then a text message from the same number saying, I'm here. This one really creeped me out. I texted back saying, who are you? The response was that they were from Craigslist, which confused me even more. But it was time to see if this guy was all talk or if he actually showed up. I moved out into the living room and looked out of my front window. The neighborhood typically gets very dark at night and does not have street lights, so I couldn't really see much. I wasn't noticing any cars in my driveway or on the road or anything. I went over and sat back down on the couch in the family room where I had been. That room was just a ways off of the living room. Probably like 10 seconds after sitting down, I got another text. It said, check the front window. I got up and walked into the living room. As soon as I stepped into it, I saw this man standing right outside of the living room window. He was maniacally staring at me with these wide eyes. It was one of the strangest things I've ever seen, and I did not recognize the guy at all. I called the police right then and there. The guy kept standing there for the next minute or so, not moving. Then suddenly, he just turned and ran off, sprinting out of my sight. The cops came out and searched all around. The guy had run away though and was gone. I blocked the number and checked out the front window several more times after the police left, but he didn't come back thankfully, and I haven't seen or heard from the man since then. It's still a big mystery to me though. How did he get my address, and who, and who exactly was he? I really have no idea. I have a Craigslist horror story that I would like to share. This should also serve as a warning to anybody using these types of websites. So I was recently selling my old laptop a few years ago. It was a MacBook Pro, so I knew that I could get decent money for it. The computer model was still somewhat new, and mine worked very well. I just had to get a new one for work, and I use it every day. So anyways, I listed the old one on Craigslist for $1,000. I know this is a lot of money, but it was actually worth slightly more. Within 24 hours of posting the ad online, I got a response. It was a text from someone saying that they wanted to buy the laptop. I told them that the price was 1000 cash and made sure that they were okay with it. If they negotiated with me, I might go down a little bit, but I really didn't want to sell it for much less than 1000 The person said they were good with the $1,000 though, so I suggested that we meet somewhere in public. I knew better than to give out my address or anything like that. Well, the person suggested Walmart, and I said yes because I knew that Walmart is a very public place with a lot of people. What they said next should have made me not go through with it though. The person said they could only meet 10pm or later. They claimed that they worked overnights and this was the only possible time. It seemed sketchy to me, but I guessed that it was possible. Finally, I asked their name and I introduced myself. I was told his name was Derek, so I knew it was a guy, and I asked him what he looked like so I would know it was him. He said he was average height and had dark hair. That didn't really narrow it down much, but I guess I did have a basic description. After that, we agreed on 10.15 the next night at Walmart. So the next night, I showed up shortly after 10. 
I parked sort of in the middle of the parking lot. By now, Walmart was very quiet, and they closed at 11, I believe. I texted Derek, letting him know that I was there. He didn't respond for a while, though. I waited and waited, and soon got frustrated. At like 10.30, he finally responded and said that he would be there in about 15 minutes. I was annoyed, but if he bought my computer, it would be worth it. So I waited patiently and just did stuff on my phone. More time went by, though. At shortly after 11, I was about to leave when Derek finally texted me saying that he was there. He then said that he was at the back of the parking lot. I looked around, but I couldn't see much from where I was. Eager to sell the laptop already, I drove farther to the back of the parking lot. There were several random cars spread out, and I didn't know which one was Derek. I couldn't tell if anybody was inside any of them, but most appeared to be empty. So I just kind of parked in a random spot in the back, and then asked him again where he was. He did not immediately respond to me. Then, out of nowhere, I saw this car approaching. I knew that it had to be Derek, but when it got closer, I noticed that the driver was wearing a black ski mask. Then I saw someone in the passenger seat, and they were also wearing a ski mask. I saw somebody in the back seat as well, and they were also wearing a ski mask. They pulled up right into the parking space next to me. I just drove away when I saw that. The car started to follow me at first, but when we made it to the front of the parking lot, there was actually a police car in front of the Walmart. When I saw it, I drove straight for it. I then noticed the car behind me making a complete U-turn in the narrow Walmart parking aisle. I continued over to the police car, only to see that it appeared to be empty. It worked though, and the guys were gone. I drove home and then blocked the number. After that, I took my laptop off of Craigslist and listed it on eBay instead.